Welcome to VA Dundee's New Skills, a series of creative workshops led by practicing designers. Today, I'm going to be telling you a little bit about my design practice as a comic artist, and I'm going to be showing you how I create one of my pages. My name is Katrina Laird, and I am a freelance comic artist, illustrator, and designer. And I started drawing from a really young age. And when I got to the end of high school, I actually didn't have good enough grades to go to art school. So instead, I did two years of forensic science and found that I was still scribbling in all my notebooks, all these drawings and things. So I decided maybe this isn't the career path for me. So I decided instead to take a year out, build my portfolio. And then four years after that, I ended up with my bachelor's degree in illustration. I do a variety of things for my work. So the first thing I do is commissions for people. So that means I could be doing comics for people. I could be doing single illustrations. I could be doing design work for them. Uh, I also uh, have an online shop where I sell my designs onto things like notebooks, enamel pins, badges. I also do my own comics as well. I do single issue comics and I do my web comic. Uh, and I also do teaching at VA Dundee and the Dundee Comics Creative Space, where I teach uh, people of a variety of age groups how to make their comics better, how to draw certain things, whatever they ask for me to do, I'll do my best to teach them. I also do single issue comics as well, which I release as a whole instead of page by page like I do my web comic. And the current project I'm working on is a precursor to a larger story, and it's called My Monster X Girlfriends. Representation is really important to me in my work, so I try and include as many LGBT plus characters and people of color as possible so that people can see themselves in my stories and they can see the kind of things that they could potentially do. So I don't like to make stories about people suffering. I think there's quite a lot of that in the world and I, I'd much rather be making stories about people's successes and just giving back a little bit of hope. I'm one of the freelance designers here at v and Dundee, and as such, I spend a lot of time in the galleries taking people around on tours. And one of my favorite pieces to take people to in the gallery is the set design, which is for a play called The Cheviot, The Stag, and The Black Black Oil. And I really like this piece because in particular, it's a really good design that fits into a, a perfect purpose troupe that were taking it around the country, they didn't have an awful lot of space, they didn't have an awful lot of budget either, so they managed to create a giant pop-up book that was their set pieces. So to get to the next scene, all they have to do is turn the page to get to the next bit, and when it was all done, they just packed the whole thing up, and I just really, really like this piece. So my creative process for when I start making comics is pretty much the same every time. I start off with my thumbnails, which is what this page is. So these are very small versions of what each final page is going to look like. And this is really helpful because it will help me figure out how many panels I can get onto a page without it looking cluttered. It makes sure that my speech bubbles have enough room between uh, not covering up people's faces. And it also makes sure I can get all the beats of the story into however many pages I've got. So this had 29 pages. So I had to make sure I had my start, my middle, my ending, and make sure that it all fit in comfortably and wasn't too rushed. So it also helps with the flow of the page. And what I mean by the flow of the page is how your reader experiences your story, because it's not laid out like a traditional book where you just start and you just keep going line by line. You've got drawings in the middle. So here I've highlighted some key points in blue. So these are speech bubbles, people's faces, eyes, these spirits that are hanging around as well. They're all key points because they're things that your eye is drawn to while you're reading through this page. So you can see the key points lead all around to the end of the page. 
And maybe your eye is drawn to different things. Maybe your eye is drawn to the tree rather than the little spirit, or maybe these little jellyfish wind chime looking creatures instead. But for the most part, you're being drawn around this way so that you're reading everything in the correct order. You're not jumping around to different speech bubbles and getting the story in the wrong order. So that's what your thumbnails can be really useful for. And this is also why it's really important to talk to other people about how your story is being read. So once we have the thumbnails, we then move on to the sketching stage, which is also called pencils. So this is just a very basic version of the full-sized page. So here I've got the start where Agapanthus is trying to climb onto Tova, which is the chimera's name, and she ends up being bucked off and dropped into the mud. My thumbnail I actually felt was good enough to use as a sketch, so what I did was digitally, I copied it from the thumbnails page, and then I just blew it up really big, and then I'll go in with the finer detail afterwards. When I'm normally inking my pages, I do it digitally. So I have a tablet connected to my computer and I'll take a new layer and I will ink over the top of my sketch and then I'll go into the coloring stage with another layer or several layers depending on how you like to work. I'm a monster and I use one layer and there's lots of comic artists will not be happy with me for that. But what you can do is you can 100% do all of this traditionally. You can use an um, actual pencil and you can use an actual pen to ink your work and you can color it traditionally as well with markers, colored pencils. It really just depends on how much practice you put into your materials as to how good your end result is. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to use a digital sketch and I'm going to ink it traditionally. And what you can do if you're wanting to scan this and then color it digitally is you can change your sketch layer when you print it out to be in either blue or red. And when you get to scan it to then color it, you can change your scanner settings or edit in another uh, coloring program or something like that. And you can remove all the red and blue lines so you're just left with your nice crisp lines. So that's one thing you can do when you're going through the process of sketching. So. The other great thing about comics is that you don't have to draw them starting at panel one, panel two, panel three. You can draw whichever bits you want. So I'm going to draw the panel that I took the most joy in drawing, which is Agapanthus's poor face when she fell in the mud. One tip that I was given when I was very little as well is to not start with the eyes when you're drawing a face because you can get them in the wrong position if you start with them. So I tend to start with the nose because of that. Another tip for improving your artwork is to draw just a little something every day. And it really doesn't have to be anything sophisticated or uh, anything. And it doesn't even have to be good. You might end up just tossing it out afterwards. But because you drew that one piece, it means that you got more practice in for the next time that you want to draw that thing or just the next time you want to do a drawing. So there's loads of my drawings that are terrible to this day and I will just get rid of them. But because I drew them, it means I got a little bit better for doing them. They have to get the bad drawings out of the way to get to the good ones. When you're making comics, you're going to find that you're drawing an awful lot for just one page and it's very, very time consuming. So if you find a way to draw something that looks just as good as if you spent an entire month on your page, then by all means, cut that corner and, and just do it. There's, there's no sense in being precious about your pages if a viewer is only gonna look at it for a couple of seconds and they're, they're possibly not even gonna take in your background. So if you just, make the most of your shortcuts and you find a way to do it quicker, just take it. There's no shame in it. So I'm particularly inspired by an awful lot of manga, and I always have been since I was very little. 
Uh, I, was, I was a big fan of um, Cardcaptor Sakura when I was little, and uh, although her name is actually Cardcaptor Sakura, but the, <laughs> the terrible English dub at the time uh, pronounced it very incorrectly. Um, so I, I've been a big fan of Clamp since I was little, who were the, the illustrators behind that. And the, there's, a, there's a whole host of them. There's um, uh, a series that I really like called The Girl from the Other Side. It's a really unique style. It's a lot of very traditional inking work going on in there. They use a lot of uh, solid and, and uh, cross-hatching colors. I'll show you. This is what cross-hatching is really building up building up tone through lines and they do they do an awful lot of um, textural work just through their lines so they have monster characters in there that look very very textured almost almost static effect with the, the number of lines that they use that that's a really really good inspirational series for me is the girl from the other side So this is what the finished inks look like when I did them digitally. So we've got all the speech bubbles in now. I've just darkened the page a little bit so you can see them because I didn't put outlines around them. But there's no fast set rules about speech bubbles and whether they have to have lines or not. It's just a good idea to get your tails pointing to each character's mouth, uh, whoever is, is speaking. So that's what I've done in each of these. So you can see the, the finished result and I've got poor Poor Agapanthus looking miserable in that bottom panel. So after that, I digitally color all of my work and then I add the details over the top of the rain and the extra, extra pieces and try and get that, that mood just right and try and get my color palettes looking okay too. So this is the final page as it turns out. So I've stuck two colors that kind of uh, bring about that kind of damp atmosphere because obviously this is a very wet scene. Agapanthus has sadly fallen in some mud and I just really wanted to bring home the idea that she is completely miserable in this horrible situation. She is poorly dressed and she really sticks out from the environment. So uh, that's pretty much the, the page done. All the speech bubbles are in place. All of the sound effects are in place. I've added the rain onto it as well and that would be posted onto my webcomic page uh, whichever week it comes out and uh, I would just wait and see what comments that come in from people. One thing that's really important to consider with your work, especially when you're making comics that other people would read, is you need to make sure that other people are able to read it the way that you've intended. Just because you read it a certain way doesn't mean that everybody else is going to read it the same way. So it's really good at every stage to go and speak to someone, have them read over it, get their feedback. If something isn't working for them, maybe you can change things around a bit. There's lots of different ways that you can get into comic illustration and illustration in general. It doesn't have to be through art school. It doesn't have to be uh, through a club or anything like that. If you're happy drawing on your own, that's fine. If you're happy drawing with a group of friends, that's also fine. That's what I did uh, for a lot of my early years was just drawing with friends and sharing our comics together and just having a good time. So if you take my work from way back then and then you look at it now, you can see where all of that scribbling has ended up getting me to. So there's no age limit. If you find a way that you enjoy, just go for it. Thanks for joining me today for this new skills workshop. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you'd like to see any more of my work, you can find me at katrinalaird.co.uk and you can also find me on Twitter at OwlRoostArt. And next month, there will be another new designer for another new skills workshop. Bye.